Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba rahabati fillah In our hadith studies Hadith khamas ashar The 15th hadith In arba'ina nawawi عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليقول خير وليصمت ومن كان يؤمن بالله وباليوم الآخر فليكرم جاره ومن كان يؤمن بالله واليوم واليوم الآخر فليكرم ضيفه Ruahu Muslim wa Bukhari. In this hadith, there are immense uh, benefits as we've been coming across from this fantastic book. And from amongst those benefits that benefit us regarding our tarbiyah, our educational benefits on how we upbring ourselves. We raise up ourselves and the upbringing of our children. So from those benefits that can be derived from this hadith, and in fact, when we look at the benefits that we're going to talk about, you'll see that a lot of these benefits, especially in the West, that we have a great hajjah, we have a great need for, because these really teach us important Islamic values. So one of the benefits of this hadith uh, as far as the translation of the hadith, the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever believes in Allah and the Day of Judgment, uh, then he should say something good or keep silent. And whoever believes in Allah and the Day of Judgment should uh, be good with his neighbors. You know, should be kind with his neighbors or serving his neighbors uh, and give them their rights. And whoever believes in Allah in the day of judgment, then they should be uh, kind with their guest, you know, or generous with their guest. In this hadith, some of the benefits of this hadith first, uh, this hadith, <clears throat> it illustrates the importance of and the superiority of good and excellent manners in Islam. And that excellent manners is from Iman. And it's from the Muqasid al-Shari'ya. And it is also, meaning it is from the one of the Sharia objectives. And also it has one of the greatest one of its greatest goals and purposes is regarding da'wah in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now just think if we practice this, being from Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, the Salafiyin or Salafiyun, that if we implemented this, how many more people would have a positive reaction to the da'wah to Salafiyya, da'wah to Ahlul Sunnah, if they were to see us practicing what we preach? Practicing the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So as was mentioned, it is it shows us the ahamiya wa fadl muqarram al-akhlaq fil Islam. It shows us the the importance and the superiority of excellent manners in Islam. It's not from the Sufi minhaj, it's not from the tabliq, Jamata Tabliq. It's not from Aqwana Muslimin, but rather this is from Islam that every Muslim should be striving to have good and righteous manners. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith uh, shows us that deeds are from Iman. A'mal min al-Iman. And if there are greater deeds, the greater the deeds that are superior uh, by their righteousness, the more superior one's iman is, or the greater one's iman is. This shows us 
that iman increases with ta'a, with obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and goodness. Wa yanqus bi And it goes down, our iman declines and decreases from sinfulness, from sins. Another benefit of this hadith, this hadith shows us the importance of iman in the day of judgment and that it was mentioned several times with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that believing Allah, that those are both pillars of what? Pillars of iman. And tu'minu billahi wa malaikati wa kutubihi wa rasuli wa liyum al-akhir wa tu'minu bi qadri khayrihi wa shah. That those are two of the pillars and the first pillar of iman is believing in Allah. Believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly. Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that by believing in the day of judgment and all of those pillars of Iman, that this will help us do righteous deeds and it's a preparation for the hereafter. So therefore, istiqama is for the islah of the mujtama or the sulh or silah of the mujtama that this is for the by by doing being on straightness and righteousness this helps to rectify the whole community another benefit of this hadith this hadith should, shows us that uh, righteous speech and speech about righteous things related to the religion and goodness are better than being silent. So it's not just a, a great benefit just to be quiet all the time, but rather speaking about good, reminding people of the good, reading the book of Allah, the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and sharing that with people is from the good speech. And that is better than just being silent. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith also illustrates for us the fadl of samt, the superiority or the excellence of being silent. So being silent is positive sometimes, especially if you have nothing good to say. And that's exactly the, uh, from the al-fadh of the hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيُقُلْ خَيْرًا وَلْيَسْمُطْ He said, whoever believes in Allah in the Day of Judgment, then say something good, or keep silent. Another benefit of this hadith, and so again, this is looking at the maslah or the musalim wa mufasid, that when speaking and keeping silent, all of these things, as with many of the things in the religion, you look to the harms and the benefits, and you look for the greater islah, the greater um, the greater mas um, uh, maslaha, the greater benefit. In speaking, is it better to speak, speak right now and share something, or is it better to keep silent in this situation? And that may come to even issues of the religion. Sometimes you debate with someone, or you get in arguments with people about the deen, and you see that it's going nowhere, and in fact it's increasing the sin of all parties involved, because the people begin to speak with their desires, and begin to speak without knowledge. And this can happen to even the students of knowledge and even the scholars. That's why it's better to always look at where the maslaha and the mafsada is in speaking and engaging in uh, issues, even when it comes to the religion. Another benefit of this hadith, uh, uh, also along with that point, is a, another uh, hadith the Prophet ﷺ said, men's Men samt naja, or men enam. So the Prophet ﷺ said in the Uwahu Imam uh, Ahmed, Sahih Jami, that uh, the Prophet ﷺ said that uh, whoever is silent has achieved success, or by keeping silent, one has achieved success. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith also shows us the, that a person will be held accountable for their statements, for what they speak about and what they say. And so this is very important for us, that 
This is why I try not to speak too much about other individuals, even people from Ahl al-Bid'ah, because unless I have strong evidence and there's a maslaha, a benefit in speaking about them, meaning other people have not warned against this, this individual, or this is something that has come to me and I've looked into the issue, then it is better often to keep silent because you will be held accountable for everything you say. So think about all those brothers and sisters who speak about people unnecessarily, engaging in sin, not even affirming with what, what, with what they said, is it true or false? Or what was the, the narration or the speech that was brought to them? Was it true or false? But they engage in that. So they're just collecting sin. And perhaps they are benefiting the one they are speaking about and that that person may take from their hasanat on yawm al-qiyamah wa'iyadhin billah min thalika. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem ma yulaffadhu min qawlin illa ladayhi raqibun ateeb. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lets us know that we are monitored for our speech and that there is no speech which is spoken, except that it is witnessed, that there are witnesses. The ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions uh, that verily there are, uh, there are two witnesses over you, meaning there's malaika recording your speech. And there's many ayat which illustrate this, illustrate this point uh, for us. Another benefit of this hadith is hadith shows us the excellence of being generous to your neighbor and that they have one of the greatest rights over you in the Islamic Sharia and that we should strive our best regardless of whether they're Muslim or non-Muslim, whether they're relatives or non-relatives, to show some kindness to your neighbors. And the opposite of that is true and gained from this hadith, that harming your neighbors is a serious sin that you should avoid and stay away from. Do not harm them by the way you park, the noise you make, uh, the objects you put in front of their door, whatever the case may be, be good to your neighbors and generous and do not cause them harm and difficulty. So that's a reminder to myself and my brothers and sisters to be careful. And in a hadith, uh, Jibreel, uh, the Prophet والسلام, said, ما, ما زال جبريل يسيني بالجار حتى ظننت أنه سيور, سيور, سيورث, سيورثه عليه. The Prophet والسلام, said that Jibreel did not cease to uh, advise me about the importance of the, uh, of, of the neighbor until I began to think that the neighbor would be of those who inherit. But of course, there was no, no revelation to show that. So that shows us how important uh, treating one's neighbor with respect and not harming the neighbor is. Another benefit of this hadith are also in line with that. Uh, the Prophet والسلام, said, and this is very strong, listen to this hadith. Wallahi la yu'min. Wallahi la yu'min. Wallahi la yu'min. Qil man ya Rasulullah. Qala man la, man la ya'min jarahu biwa'iqi. Bukhari. The Prophet والسلام, said, he swore by Allah. He said, Wallahi, they don't believe. You, you, he doesn't believe. And he said it three times. By Allah, he doesn't believe. By Allah, he doesn't believe. And then they said, O Messenger of Allah, who? And he said, the one whose neighbor does not feel safe from his evil. And this is in Ruahu Bukhari. 
another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us that ikram ajar, that being good to one's uh, neighbor, does not just include statements of goodness and, and, and small kindnesses, but also it includes uh, all the things which are included in righteousness and also refraining from harming them, as we mentioned. And those show some of the benefits and harms uh, that one can do to their neighbor, that we should avoid that by all means harming our neighbor. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us the superiority and the obligation to be generous to one's guests. And guests, uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, uh, the author mentions guests, meaning those who came from traveling and came to one's home. But this also includes those who are not, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, um, it's, very, it's general that this is inclusive of all guests, whether it's just you invited a brother or a sister or a family over to have tea with you or to eat, that you should be very generous with them and very respectful and good with them and leave a good impression with them. Another benefit of this hadith is it shows us the impermissibility of being harmful to one's uh, guest. And that is a sign of naqs fi iman, of, of a person's iman being decreased and weak. And it's a mukhalif, mukhalif li shari'illah. And it goes against, uh, a, 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 you know, it's a violation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sharia. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us uh, that the uh, superiority of giving food and sharing food and that it is one of the reasons for entering paradise. So this is an excellent reminder. So try to do some, some charity if you can. And this includes feeding your guests. So when Ramadan comes, try to share, try to invite people. Also, likewise, because there is such a haja right now, uh, our brothers and sisters in Syria that are being bombarded by the shayateen from amongst the jinn and the ints, that they are in need, in great need of dua and sadaqah, if you have some means, some charities that you trust to give sadaqah that, uh, to, to help the people from their difficulty, likewise in Yemen, likewise in uh, East Africa, in West Africa, all over Africa, in fact, um, and, and many, many of the African countries, because due to the poverty and due to the suffering and due to the also the severe conditions right now of famine in South Africa as well as uh, East Africa. Uh, likewise, Ahabatifillah, this hadith shows us to and is a warning to be, uh, to not be wasteful of our wealth. So when you are being generous with your, your neighbor or your guest, that does not mean that you need to uh, spend excessively and go and be wasteful, but be within your means, be within the custom of generosity in your society. This also, this hadith, also we gain from this hadith the importance of being one community and assisting one another, loving one another, being merciful with one another, and affectionate with one another. As we mentioned in a hadith, uh, in, in a hadith prior to this, uh, or I believe it was some athar we mentioned uh, about those same important characteristics of loving one another and being merciful with one another, and affectionate with one another, and that these are the sifat of mu'minin, these are the characteristics of the, uh, the believers. This hadith also shows us the importance of doing righteous deeds and, and, and worship uh, that, in, that is inclusive 
of benefiting others. So for example, we know sadaka is an act of ibadah if you do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in accordance with Islam. And that by doing so, you're also benefiting you're benefiting your own soul by doing this act of ibadah, but you're benefiting other than you. So this is ibadah ta'addi. You know, this is ibadah which, or muta'addi, which uh, uh, affects, you know, other than you. It affects others in the community. It spreads good in the community. Uh, and the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, said, Ahabba nas Allah and fa'ahum. Subhanallah. Ruahu tabarani, sahih ajami'ah. Uh, in this hadith, uh, which also affirms for us this meaning, the Prophet wasallam said, The most beloved of the people to Allah is the one who is more, most beneficial. So it shows us the importance to strive to give benefit to others. Strive to give benefit to others with uh, your wealth, with your time, if you have knowledge to share with dawah, if you have whatever it is, try to benefit yourself and benefit others. Because then you may become from the most ahabban nas in Allah. And that's surely what we want to be. A last point I want to mention is the importance of this charity and sadaqah. That even in our countries, of course, we have a great need. Uh, in America, I know, which is such a wealthy nation, but there are so many of the haves... Uh, there are so many of the have-nots versus the haves. Uh, there are many people who are in need. And this is a good majal, a good way of giving da'wah. To share with those communities, share with the Muslims and the non-Muslims. Open a food bank. Open, uh, you know, have some activities outside the masjid that benefit the greater community. Then perhaps you'll fall under that hadith of being the anfa nas and, 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 and be beloved by Allah Zawajal. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was correct was from myself and the Shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.